Hi all, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we'll be focusing on signing logs. I will be accessing the Microsoft Entra ID admin console, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. And I'll be accessing the signing logs. I'll be reviewing the signings, any associated errors with the signings, and any patterns. These bits of information within the signing logs provide us valuable insights into how our users are accessing applications. These could be SaaS applications, these could be line of business applications and services generally ac across our organization on Microsoft 365 tenancy. The sign-in logs are a powerful type of activity log that you as a global administrator or an IT admin can use to analyze within a single pane of glass. There are two other types of audit logs as well. We've got general audit, all up activity, i.e. deletion of user accounts, creation of user accounts, moving a user from one group to another. And we've got provisioning uh, logs as well. General backend processes, for example. What can we do with these signing logs? Well, that's a good question. So first things first, let's access the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. You need to navigate to entra.microsoft.com. Just like Azure Active Directory, you have a dashboard. What Microsoft are doing, they're consolidating services, placing it under one solution, which is the Microsoft Entra family in this instance. Down the left hand side, once more it coincides with Azure Active Directory, you've got your management pane or management settings. You scroll down under monitoring and health, you've got signing logs. You've also got those two other touch points, which I mentioned, audit logs and provisioning logs. But for this session, we're focusing on signing logs. We can access signing logs by selecting signing logs. First things first, you need to understand the prerequisites. A is roles. So you need to be either a global admin, security admin, security reader, global reader, or reports reader to be able to access this pane in particular. We also need the associated licensing. So formerly known as Azure Active Directory P1 or P2, which provides you uh, 30 days worth of audit login, or the free tier, which provides you seven days. Licensing now is Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Entra ID free tier, Microsoft Entra, Microsoft Entra ID uh, P1, and Microsoft Entra ID P2. Okay. Same thing, in essence. One question I get asked is, if I had a compromise, for example, within my organization, can I see last month's data after getting a, well, say for example, I've got free tier licensing, I've just been compromised. In that instance, I can only see seven days worth of audit logs. If I license from today, can I see past 30 days? The answer is no. Either you license correctly in first instance, you raise a support request, or you proactively feed the, the logs into a uh, diagnostic account through diagnostic settings, i.e. a storage account within the Azure Management Portal. You can filter the time frame by selecting date. By default, it selects last 24 hours. But once again, in this instance, I've got a premium tier organization, so I can go back the last 30 days. I can also customize the time interval. Please bear in mind this is in US format. So I want to come out of here. Make sure I press apply so I can get out of this pane. You may see we've got user sign-ins sign -ins interactive, user sign-ins non-interactive, service principal sign-ins and managed identity sign-ins. So what are these? Well, interactive user sign-ins provide you an authentication factor to Enter ID itself or to interact directly with Enter ID such as a helper app or a Microsoft Authenticator app. Users can provide passwords, responses to MFA challenges, biometric factors or QR codes to, to Enter ID. This log also includes federated sign-ins from additional identity providers that are federated to Enter ID itself. For example, Okta. The interactive sign-in logs did previously contain some non-interactive sign-ins from Microsoft itself. For example, exchange clients. Although those sign-ins weren't non-interactive, these were included in the interactive sign-in logs. 
uh, for additional visibility, but these are now moved back to non-interactive, just as an FYI. We do have service principal logs and managed identity signing logs, but I won't be digging into these in this session. One thing you can do, these columns are customizable. For privacy reasons, I've removed the IPv4 address, which is usually visible uh, by default. Okay, however, you can add or remove the columns as you may wish. You can come into here and add any applicable to you. Maybe you are conducting an investigation for a compromised account. Maybe you're just generally looking at what people are doing, where they're at. Most of us in a hybrid situation in terms of working from home, maybe on a, a set rotor or permanently, we need to understand where people are signing in and when they're signing out. You can add and customize these columns as you may wish. We've also got a filter option here where, for example, if I'm just using, uh, looking for a particular user, I can select user, I can press apply, I can type in my name, Rio, and it will filter all the logs associated with said user account. You can export the sign logs by pressing download, if you've got an option from JSON or CSV, and it may give you a bit more of a customization, uh, doing it through a Excel workbook, for example. You can create, create filters yourself and visualize it in, 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 the, in the way you want to visualize it in terms of your organization. Sign logs are not instant. They do take a good five, 10 minutes just to propagate through. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, there is a refresh button here you can press or just quick click F5 on your keyboard. When accessing sign logs once more, these are in US formats, just bear that in mind. Most likely you can change that for your organizational settings. In this instance, I just haven't got around to doing so as it's just a demo lab. But for example, I'm gonna select the failure attempt in this in this, this one. Uh, this failure attempt was, was happened at 8.17 p.m. on the 18th of July uh, from location uh, Cleve Hill. Once again, not accurate, accurate, but gives you indicative of where the server is communicating to and from in terms of your ISP and what level of, uh, of factor of authentication are we using in this instance, single factor, because I've turned off security defaults. But recommendation is you should be using conditional access from a Microsoft perspective. We can click into this failed sign-in log and it will give us a general overview on what's happened, i.e. request ID, correlation ID, timestamp, failure reason, how to mitigate the, the failure, okay, and remediate, uh, remediate it if such, i.e. it's a compromised account. What we can do if the failure reason doesn't give you a bit more of a understanding of what's happening, you can copy the sign in error ID and you can open up a website called uh, login.microsoft.online, or sorry, URL, login.microsoft.online.com forward slash error. You can type in the error code in the error code box and press submit, and it will give you a bit more indicative on what's going on. Um, however, in this particular scenario, the, the, it gives us the same and it coincides, so that's fine. Once more, we can see what application was accessed, um, the application ID, maybe it was an enterprise app uh, of some sort, uh, user ID, so the unique identifier, maybe you want to use PowerShell Graph API uh, to fetch the details. You can set location, in this instance, I'm not going to set location because it will disclose my, uh, my, my IPv4 address. Um, you can also filter by IPv6 as well. Device information, which you can see, okay, Accessing through Edge, okay, operating system Windows 10 in this instance. Um, is it managed? Is it not? Is it compliant? Um, if you're using the likes of Microsoft uh, Intune Endpoint Manager, you can set up compliance policies, and based off those compliance policies, you, you can um, have visibility over if the device is compliant or not. Authentication details, okay. At this time frame, I was trying to enter my password. It is a cloud only organization of which the password is in the cloud. We're not going through any authentication method, i.e. password hash or pass through or any federation of such. Of such. Um, and the re result detail was the invalid username or password. If we were using the license conditional access policies, once again, premium tier license, either enter ID P1 or P2, we'd be able to see if any conditional access policies were applied or satisfied and if any were in report only i.e. we're testing the conditional access policy 
and want to check um, the, the outcome of ZCA policy. Other than that, in terms of signing logs, um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, the value is there to, to understand uh, what's going on in terms of your user activity, in terms of authentication. Um, and and if you um, witness a incident of which uh, an account is compromised, you understand you, you're able to understand if there was any lateral movement of such. Any questions, please do let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. Um, and thank you very much.